I'm really excited about today's class. I did take our, our normal cookie classes are almost two and a half hours long. So in those classes, you will make your own icing, you dilute your own icing, you do all of your colors, and that's pretty much the first 45 minutes to an hour. Wow. So I condensed all of that down by doing the majority of your colors for you, but saved a little bit of the white so you can see how to change the consistency. And we can use Royal Icing Premix, which is awesome. And um, you just add water and follow the directions. One tip for this, when you're mixing it in your mixer, you can use a whip or a paddle attachment for cookies, it really doesn't matter. If you're using it for string work though, you always wanna use a paddle. For what, what? String work, string, string work on the sides of cakes. Because oh, um, a whip puts so much air into it, it's hard to knock all that air back out before you oh. put it in a mm -hmm. bag. But for flow icing, it does not matter. I do love to use my KitchenAid for that. Um, as I am mixing it, a lot of people see it get all light and fluffy and they want to stop mixing. But you want to keep mixing until it loses its gloss. So we go back to a matte finish. When it achieves that matte finish, then it's ready. So if you stop it too soon, it doesn't have enough strength to hold up the puffiness. Still looks great, it looks great on cookies, but a, a professional can tell a slight difference. We like this because it's so convenient, but you can also buy just the meringue powder and mix it with your powdered sugar and your flavorings. Mix it up in your bowl separately. If you're doing a ton of cookies, this is more economical. And actually the recipe on your sheet talks about meringue powder, powdered sugar, and then the water to make it into the consistency. The same rules apply. You're going to mix it until it is light and fluffy, stiff peaks, and has lost its gloss. The tipless bags that I use are actually the extra long tipless bags. I love them because they're economical. So instead of using a featherweight or even the plastic disposable, these are a few pennies versus 35 cents to, the featherweights aren't really expensive. Um, so these are really economical. They're perfect for color flow icing. And I like the extra long because when I tie it into a knot, basically this helps keep everything inside, especially the color flow. Mm -hmm. It's so loose, it wants to come out back in front of the bags. So you'll lay it down and there'll be a pool of icing hanging out on the table. So the knot keeps it in check, keeps it from running out. Um, and then I just cut off the excess so I have something I can manage and handle. The greens and yellows in your towel are actually full strength. So these are right out of the mixing bowl, colored, placed in bags, and set aside. All of the ones that are cut are flood consistency. So we've added water until it becomes this consistency that when you pipe it, it spreads out slowly and fills in the space. So we'll talk about flood consistency and full strength consistency today. We do need to mix up two more colors, well, just one color, white, two different consistencies. We need full strength and a little bit of flood consistency. So we're going to start with that. Just peel the plastic off the top. And you won't need this plastic anymore today. Take one of your piping bags And I take it and fold it inside out. Almost, I leave about four inches inside. And I like to put my left hand or my non-dominant hand inside to hold that. And we just need a small scoop of icing about this big. That's about an ounce to go into the bag. I close my hands over the spoon. and pull the spoon out clean. Raise those sides back up, and I just pinch out the air that's at the bottom, although if it has an air bubble, it's not gonna hurt anything. Press it as far into that corner as I can, but there is an air bubble, so it's going to stop. Good. And then tie that bag up.
So this is full strength. I'm gonna leave the tail on and put it up here. And just, just want you to feel how that full strength feels and how much texture it shows. So if I were trying to put this on a cookie, there's a lot of texture. I would never be able to get that to shake out into the smooth surface that is consistent with a flood cookie. So how do we get that flood consistency? We're gonna add small amounts of water. When I add my food coloring, I'm also adding water. So I always add my food coloring first and then see what the consistency is before I start adding water. Because if I go and get it to the perfect consistency and then add food coloring to it, I'll continue adding water so then it becomes mushy. So we're going to start with just a few little squirts, let's say 10 squirts, right on top of our royal icing. So you can see with those, just those few squirts of icing or uh, water, our icing is now softer. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to cover the surface of a cookie with it, it's still going to leave a lot of texture. I can shake it and shimmy it and try to get it to level out. And it's still gonna be just a little bit thick. So that's what the best it's going to do with that first amount of water. So hold off for a second and just watch me. I'm going to add a few squirts at a time now. And stir that in. And then I'm going to start doing some tests. The first test is to divide the icing in half, then shimmy and shake that bowl to see if the two sides come together. It should do it really slowly, like 15 to 20 seconds. If it doesn't fully come together, a couple more squirts of water. If we go too loose, we can always add full strength back to it, but it's better to, to feel it and stop beforehand. So there's my slice in half, shimmy and shake. And while a lot of the texture has gone out, there's still a little bit of texture. It's coming together, coming together pretty nicely, actually. I think I could get away with one more squirt of water and this will be the perfect flood consistency. Maybe two. I'm gonna do two. Stir that in really well. Slice it to divide it. Shake it. Count in your head. That's good enough. That's a flood consistency. It's steadily filling in. I know it's white, so it's hard to see, but there's a little tiny groove and it's slowly sinking into that groove. So we want it to be thick. A lot of people want to keep adding water at this point, but do you want to stop here? I'm going to go ahead and put this in my icing bag and then I'll come over to watch yours. So I know that this is color flow. I want to keep it straight in my head. So I'm going to chop off that little end and it goes down here with my color flow pile. So we are actually going to start with some of the full strength items first. We are going to, re it's weird, when you're doing cookies, you have to think in terms of how you build up the cookie. So you're gonna start from the back and work your way to the top. For example, these shells have color flow behind it, but it needs to dry enough that we can put our little lines on top of the shell too, right? Um, the it's also a matter of like how I'm going to use icing. I know I want to use full strength for my palm tree, but I want some full strength for my grass skirt as well, but I have a tip in there. So I could create two bags, or we can do this first, put the extra icing into one more bag. So we're going to start with the palm trees. This is a number 352, and it looks kind of like a duck bill. So it just kind of has this duck bill action. And we want this point, the bottom point of that duck bill, to touch our cookie. And I'm going to start right here in the middle and I start squeezing and I just move my wrist forward and back slightly to create something that looks more like a palm leaf. So one more time, I'm going to take and place the point of that duck bill 
against the cookie and ruffle by moving my wrist forward and back toward the center of that cookie. And then I'm actually going to rotate the cookie. That's where that turntable is going to come in handy. And do the same thing here. And then I'm going to start connecting more in the middle of that space. So I'm going to overlap, come over the top of that and create the palm leaves. We are going to take a little bit of the screen icing and put it in our last bag. And it's only because I want some contrast color in the grass skirt. So I'm going to open it up as much as possible and just squeeze a little bit of this darker green into that bag. So you get like this little tiny smidge of green. We can probably put more of this in there if we want to. I gave myself less green to begin with. So this is full strength icing. I'm going to go ahead and leave the end on. We're gonna save that for the grass skirt. Next up, we're going to go ahead and make the tree trunk for our palm tree. And I'm going to show you a technique that's called pillowing. I'm going to begin by cutting the tip of my bag, very small, about an eighth of an inch. So I have rulers for you so you can see that eighth of an inch. And that's where we want to cut our bag. And it's really hard to see on camera. But it's a small little hole, an eighth of an inch. And the palm tree, I think I'm going to start right up here, is a series of triangle shapes. I'm going to start by doing a little border on one. And then I'm going to come in and fill in some more of that border and stop. Try not to overfill it. It's going to fill itself in. And then I use this little toothpick. There are also some really beautiful scribe tools out on the market. And I just use it to fill in those blank spaces. Now to create the pillowing effect, I have to imagine that there's going to be one here. And I'm going to skip over and put part of my palm tree right here. Little zigzags to fill that in. I'm going to skip one. Oops. And put my next one here. And I will allow these three sections to dry before I put the middle sections in and it will keep that definition between the individual sections of the palm tree. So using my Dresden tool or scribe tool or anything with a sharp point, just filling in those little holes. We're gonna let that dry a little bit more before we try to add the next segments in. And we are going to skip over to our little grass skirt. We're going to put a little bit of brown as an undertone across our grass skirt. So for me, I like to do just the skirt border like that. And then create little lines for colors within our grass skirt. We actually have three tones that we're using. We're doing brown, a bright green, and then the leaf green. And you can add a little bit more if you feel like it. So something I didn't talk about, the easiest way to pipe is to touch, lift your bag and squeeze, and then touch again when you're ready to stop it. We're going to bring the palm tree forward again. And these have started drying a little bit. So now I know I can take and make additional portions of my palm tree. So I'm going to overlap there slightly and bring it right up and then fill it in. Same thing. Of 
I touch the next, I get really close to touching the next one. And then as my, as I use my little pick, I can swirl that icing and it will fill in those gaps like that. So I got really close and then I did this and it went up and touched the next section. And you can always add coconuts if you'd like. So we can squeeze a large round coconut, just holding my tip in one spot and squeezing. And once I have the little sections, once I get rid of all the little spaces, I stop using my scribe tool because then it'll start adding extra texture and lines that I don't want. <laughs> Next, we're gonna move to our body of our wonderful hula dancer. Now, you can do bikini and just leave the cookie blank here or you can do full body, like, um, like an actual swimsuit kind. I think I'm gonna do full body. And I'm going to use this pretty coral because it's my favorite color. I'm going to cut 1 8 of an inch. You can use red, you can use coral, you can use yellow up there, any of those color flow colors. And you can either leave it solid, or you can do something that's called um, wet on wet techniques you can make it look like like it has flowers on the suit so let me demonstrate that i'm cutting a small hole out of my red so i'm doing coral and red two very small holes and i do kind of like the halter top style so i'm going to create my my halter top by creating a little border here and then i'm going to bring it in give her a nice little waistline and create my border. Now this next part I have to move really quickly. So I'm going to very quickly fill in that space. I don't have to be too exact because I'm getting ready to use the scribe tool. Are you scared that it's going to dry? Do what? Is it going to dry? Yeah, so it'll dry really fast, so I need to move really fast. Using my scribe tool getting rid of all those little lumps and bumps. Especially with the air conditioner on. I might need to turn that off for you guys. So there's my bodice. And I can shimmy and shake it, but before I do, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five little dots. Clean your scribe tool off. Reach in there and pull that. Go on the outside of each dot and reach toward the middle. And that'll give you kind of a hibiscus flower. One, two, three, four, five. Icing's already starting to dry. Clean the scribe tool off in between. I'm almost dry, so I can only do a couple more of these before it'll start crusting and dragging. I like to give it just a little bit of a waistline, so I now can overpipe and put just a little bit of that pretty coral right across there, as if it's a part of the belt. And then you can give it details, like um, wrinkles or where the ruching happens in the swimsuit itself to give it more definition. You don't have to, but it gives a sense of movement. Especially right here where she's obviously twisting. I think I'm going to stop there and see if I can find just a few flowers and fun sprinkles to create my little lay. So to create the lay, I'm going to use some of that full strength green and I'm cutting a very tiny little tip out of it. And I can pipe something that looks kind of like a little leaf and place a flower. 
I've got butterfly wings that kind of look like these flowers as well, so they can kind of tuck in behind it. And once you have some of that colored grass on Belinda, you can switch over to the Sprite Limey Green and do the same thing. Make a little tiny hole and add to the grass skirt. And if you want to give this the sensation of movement from one direction, one direction or another, you can make those lines curve around one side. And it kind of gives the sensation that a hip is being popped out, you know? We are going to use our red, coral, and yellow for the flowers, all of the color flows. There are two parts of this flower. There's a center color and an outer color. And then there's a yellow stamen that happens later. So I tend to avoid yellow in here, but you can use it if you'd like. I'm actually going to use red and this coral color for my flower. And I'm going to open up my hole just a little bit more on the red. And I'm going to start just by outlining where I want the flower petal to kind of appear. And realize you don't have to go, and you don't have to follow that line. You can make your own, so it can be really more variegated. And then I'm going to fill in, not all the way to the middle though. So, I'm filling in the cookie fairly well. I'm gonna stop right there, kind of in the middle. Go ahead and take a moment to use this tool and drag it up to those lines as fast as you can. Then switch colors and fill in with this pretty peachy coral color. Fill that in and then drag it up into the petal. And that gives you that beautiful two-tone. If you don't like the darker coral inside, stop and scrape your tool off before you move to drag around. Then, shimmy and shake. You can also make this three-tone if you'd like and put a smidge of yellow right in the middle. If you still have enough time with it drying. And if you don't like the way it looks when you drag it, you can also be very specific. So with the wet on wet technique, you can draw right over the top of it and it will sink down into the other color. And as long as I don't disturb my outer layer too much, that wet on wet will happen and sink on down into the flower. Seashell is going to be our color flow white, our color flow light tan, our coral, and if you want a darker, a little bit of the darker brown. But I would only do a tiny amount of that dark brown. So we make sure that we have all of them cut open. This little um, shell attachment, this little portion here, I like to do it last. So I'm going to outline the cookie first above that point. And I'm going to start with just white. 
and I do my whole outline and then stop right about there and then I'll create a fairly good amount of white color flow. I'm going to go ahead and switch and go to my tan. And I'm going to put a small amount right there too. And don't go the whole cookie because I think it's probably going to dry too fast on you. So you can do the upper portion of the cookie first. And you can lay line right over the top of this to blend it in. So now I'm going to do most of the rest of my cookie in this color. And start adding that wet on wet technique here. And then I might switch over to a little bit of this darker brown. So basically, I'm putting layers in and letting it fill the cookie. And you can see it's filled in that space. And then I'm going to very gently drag my scribe tool straight up and down through that cookie. I'm wiping the scribe tool off each time. And my lines start to change, so now they're coming from the outside toward the middle. Ooh, it's starting to dry already, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. So basically, I set up stripes first. and then I drag those stripes down the cookie. The paler colors are gonna look better versus bold. So lots of white toward the top with some of this taupey color, a little bit of that coral, and maybe just a little bit of the dark brown at the bottom. So now we need to finish off the bottom of our shell once those stripes are done. And I choose a neutral color, whatever feels like it works best down there at the bottom. And I create this little hinge that little hinge on the shell. And it's just those two little triangles at the bottom of the little clam shell. And then we're gonna set that big guy up out of the way to dry. And we're gonna move our hibiscus flower back down to work on cutting a little one eighth of an inch hole off of the bag. So I've got a little tiny pipe hole. I'm going to create one long stamen coming right out of the middle of my flower. It's right about there. And then little dots on both sides of the stamen at the very end, and then one row right on top of the stamen. And that's our hibiscus. It's the little details that really make it. And this is the full strength yellow.